All right, this is an incredible AIO. And if you're looking for one of the best units on the market now, keep watching. Welcome to Machines and More. EKWB's Nuclear Series of AIOs is the latest all-in-one liquid cooling solution from the well-known Slovenian liquid cooling specialist. And today I'll walk you through the features of this 240 millimeter unit, the user experience, what you can expect in terms of its performance, and whether or not it's a sensible purchase for your build. Before we begin, just a disclaimer here, big thanks to EK. They provided the test unit free of charge for the purposes of this review. But this video isn't sponsored by them. I am not paid by them for this review and they haven't mandated how to test it. Neither have they seen this video prior to its release. Or they are not apprised of my findings before this release either. And you can always expect a fair and well-researched review from this channel. And if you value content like this, Please subscribe and join us here. It really helps grow the channel. So the unit I tested here was the white CR240 Lux. It's the 240 millimeter radiator version in white, and it's also equipped with ARGB. They also have this in a non-RGB dark flavor and also in a 360 millimeter radiator version. The product presentation is excellent from the moment the user unboxes it. There's a lot of attention to detail here. You get this nice welcome packet. It makes you feel good, right? The heavy instructions in here. You've got this unit packed securely in foam. My favorite part of the packaging is this mounting hardware box. It's organized in the sleeve box. It's got cutouts for the standoffs, the thumb nuts, and even uh, features a tool to help you install those pesky things. A lot of AIOs, they just come with a plastic bag with those things inside, you gotta you know dig around and, and figure out what you have, right? This is so much easier, you know what you need to get going. The radiator itself is a very reasonable 27 millimeter thick unit. You got brushed aluminum side panels here. Another aesthetic choice here you'll notice is that that radiator cover, it extends uh, beyond the thickness of the fins to match the height of the unit. So instead of this kind of blocky shape, uh, when you view it from the side, it's a lot more streamlined to have that L-shaped cover there. And it looks good. Some of you will have this in a top mount uh, where the side of the rad will be visible. And this detail here, it really finishes off the look. The braiding on the tubing sleeves features a tight weave. It uh, almost seems like it's solid. That connects the radiator to the CPU pump block. From the cold plate to the top, I measured it at 60 millimeters. Spec that 61 millimeters. Either way, it's not super compact, so it won't fit in a case like the Dan A4 H2O. But I realize many of you, uh, you're totally not building in a case where the clearance is that tight, so this is not an issue at all. The pump block has a cover with the logo that you can remove and rotate. It also serves to diffuse the LED lighting underneath. This block does have a square cold plate. It's pre-applied with thermal paste, but they also still include a tube for remounts. Uh, which is very nice. A lot of places, a lot of AIOs don't have that. The user will screw on the appropriate Intel or AMD mounting plate to the underside of the pump unit. It is compatible with AM4, AM5, Intel LGA 11.5X, LGA 1200, LGA 1700, and 20XX. So basically any modern socket. And by the way, they included an extra mounting screw in case you lose one. They are quite small, so that's a definite possibility. And I personally have lost a mounting screw on the bottom side of an AIO before, and it is really annoying to have to go source another one. One of the advantages of the way they designed the mounting solution is that even if you are on AM4 or AM5, which is a rectangular cooler mount pattern, you still have four options for where you can position those tubing fittings to get the best uh, tubing run. The 90 degree fittings, they do rotate, so there's also a good amount of latitude for the user to adjust the tubing to a comfortable position. And it's a copper cold plate here with a dense stack of micro fins. EK makes some excellent CPU locks for open loops, so yeah, they know what they're doing here. Fans here are the new EK Loop FPT fans and the process of testing these a bit more clinically on their own. These are interesting. They measure in at 27 millimeters thick and so that makes 54 millimeters thick on the radiator plus fans and 60 millimeters on the pump block. The RPM range of the fans are from 550 RPM to 2300 RPM and instead of separate cables for ARGB and a four pin fan header cable. It features what EK calls its OmniLink ecosystem. 
an adapter cable will connect to your ARGB header and your four pin fan header. And at the fan side, a microfit eight pin connector is connected to that adapter cable. And then you can bridge the connection from that fan, daisy chain it to additional downstream fans. The connector itself, it is bigger. It's a bit more difficult to conceal, but there's overall less cable clutter. And this can be much more noticeable on the 360 millimeter unit because you just have more cables that you're losing on a 360, right? Because you have three fans. The center of the fan is translucent and you have a ring of LEDs that use the translucent blades to disperse the lighting effects. So thus far, I hope you can see the customer forward attitude that EK has engineered into the details on this unit. And so far it's quite fantastic because of these details. You know what else is fantastic? This chair, I'm sitting in. And before we get into the installation and the performance, this video does have a sponsor and let me tell you about them. Today's video is brought to you by the FlexiSpot Ergonomic Chair Pro. Some of you know about FlexiSpot's standing desks, which are wonderful, but for those seated moments, the Ergonomic Chair Pro, it's a great addition to the standing desk or any desk. And what I really like about this chair is just how much adjustability it has. Because not only can you adjust the height and the tilt of the seating position, you can adjust the seats for aft position. You can adjust the armrests for aft position. You can adjust the height of the armrest. You can adjust the head support height and the angle. Users, you're gonna be able to dial in the perfect fit here. The chair rolls smoothly on five wheels. The seat is immensely comfortable and it's very supportive. And having the head and the neck support here, it really makes extended sessions very enjoyable. Finally, this chair is cool and is breathable. You have mesh on the seat and mesh on the back. It's, it's ventilated in the back. Even if you're working hard, this chair helps you stay in that comfort zone. Right now, FlexiSpot is running an anniversary sale, which will go on until September 9th. So if you're interested, please use my link down below. It really helps the channel and please check them out if you're looking to round out your gaming or home office combo. Okay, so installation is simple on this unit. They've made it very streamlined. The fans will go on the radiator in the orientation that you want. Then you can mount the radiator where you want it. All that hardware is included. Intel setups will require a backplate on the motherboard and standoffs. Now for AM4, AM5, it's just the standoffs that you'll need with the stock backplate on your motherboard. The included tool comes in very handy with those standoffs. So once you have the correct mounting plate installed on the pump head, you will then attach it to the unit with the thumb nut and the springs. Thermal paste is pre-applied for convenience and this type of four point mounting solution makes for very even pressure on your CPU's IHS and that's great. Connect the pump head to a four pin fan header on your motherboard and connect that ARGB cable if yours is the Lux model. And then the adapter cable for the fans will connect to your CPU fan header and the downstream ARGB extension from the pump heads cable. Performance on this unit is pretty incredible. And for this test, I am comparing it to what I consider the best in class 240 millimeter AIO for a slimmer rad and regular thickness fans uh, kind of class, uh, the Cooler Master PL 240 Flux. I am in the process of modernizing my testing results. As in the past, I've been testing AOs with the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X. But just to give you an idea on where that uh, PL240 unit stacks up, one thing to note is that uh, they are good performers, but the liquid freezer, it does use a very thick radiator. And the Fantex T30 uses a thick rad plus thick fans. So those are thicker units. So you kind of almost expect them to perform better. So in this scenario, the PL240 is a very fair comparison. Let's get to the testing results. On the 5800X at 4.6 gigahertz and 1.25 volts at roughly a plus 1.1 decibel noise level, fans on the Nucleus 240 are at about 1315 RPM, speeding out the PL240 by a full degree. It's a very solid performer at what is a very quiet noise level. At a higher noise level, plus 3.3 decibels, the Nucleus 240 is at 1700 RPM. These two are dead even. At an even higher noise level, which would only really be necessary for higher powered CPUs, they are still neck and neck. And that's really pretty impressive here. The loop 
FPT fans are spec to 2300 RPM max. Uh, the ones I tested only got to 2200 RPM at max speed. There's going to be some implied variance there, but uh, at full speed, we can compare the performance of the two units again and just note the uh, difference in noise. Keep in mind the PL240, it's incapable of getting as loud. So here the EK is about 0.7 degrees to the good, but it's also 1.3 decibels louder. So I think it's pretty safe to say this is one of the best performing AIOs out there, uh, and especially so with regular thickness fans and a sub 30 millimeter rad. It is superior to the PL240 at the lower noise interval, and it's more or less equivalent to it at higher RPMs. For this next section, let's take a listen to some noise samples. The pump noise is pretty well managed, but I did detect a slightly elevated or noticeable noise profile at 100%. So for the tests, pumps on both units were kept at 90% PWM. Take a listen. I've got the EK Nucleus AIO running at 1320 RPM. It's very quiet at this point, but it is very capable of running the 5800X at 110 watts, 112 watts PPT. So pretty impressive here. And I don't think most users at this power level will need to go much higher. So impressive. Overall, not too bad, right? So EK Nucleus, the pros here, they're numerous get a thoughtful user experience, a well-designed, aesthetically-minded product with refined finishes, right? you got manageable dimensions, best-in-class performance. In fact, it's really hard to find fault with this model. If I had to pick one thing, it would be that the decals over the center hub of the fan, it's a little less in keeping with the overall streamlined aesthetics that this unit has, but you know, that's a minor thing. And I think overall, it's really hard to find fault with it. EK is clearly showing their superiority and their expertise in liquid cooling here. Pricing for the Lux CR240 is $160 US right now, which is about $5 more than the PL240 currently. So fair, they're fairly comparable. Um, but if you're running it in a case, like I tested in, the uh, test system is the NR200 here. That lighting might be a secondary concern, or if you don't care for it, you can just go for the RGB Delete Dark version, which is only $120 US. For this level of performance, it's a pretty incredible value. So when you consider everything overall, it's one of the best AIOs, if not the best that I've tested yet here on the channel. Super impressed with it. It's a highly recommended unit that carries a five-year warranty from EK, and I think you will be extremely happy with it. So that'll do it for the review today. I hope you found it helpful. So please give a like here. Make sure that you are subscribed. I'll leave product links down below. Thanks for your support and thanks for watching. Mounting Harbor.